Hey everybody, welcome to Mortgage Today for Tuesday, February 27th, 2024, and oh, what a day it was. UMBS were down six basis points bright and early. Once upon a time, the bond market was more... The bond market was more willing to react to the durable goods data, but the impact has been dwindling in recent years as part of a market reprioritization. The market reprioritizing the relevance of data post COVID. Today's impact was very small, both in terms of volume and volatility. Durable goods came in at negative 6.1 on a negative 4.5 forecast, which is a pretty big forecast, especially since it was 0.3 previously. So that's a pretty big drop in durable goods orders. Durable goods excluding defense and aircraft came in up 0.1 on a 0.1 forecast that was negative 0.6 previously. U.S. equity futures moved in small ranges with investors reluctant to make big wagers as they await economic data and commentary from Federal Reserve speakers in the coming days for clues on the outlook of interest rates. We also got some interesting news about how households are holding up based on June data. 19% of households 19% of households used buy now pay later loans in the past year. Buy now pay later use Buy now pay later use peaks at 43% among households with credit scores below 620 because they can't get other credit cards. Usage is also highest at 41% amongst households who had an application re who had a credit application rejected and 37% for those 30 plus days delinquent during the last year. Even more worryingly, many are using buy now, pay later to buy groceries. These are some real fragile households that uh, times are gonna get tough. We also got news that back on February 15th, the Department of Justice submitted a statement of interest in the case challenging a rule similar to NARS rule known as no select. In that legal filing, the federal agency rejected rule changes in a proposed settlement and instead called for an injunction that would prohibit sellers from making commission offers to buyer brokers at all, thereby promoting competition, promoting competition and innovation between buyers brokers because buyers would be empowered to negotiate directly with their brokers. I don't empowered seems like a weird word for that new home sales came in up 20 percent month over month to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 66 of 661,000 that was up 2% on a year over year basis. Median price fell 2.6% to 420,700. House prices rose 6.5% year over year according to the FHFA. However, the market showed signs of softening as house price appreciation was lower in the fourth quarter of the year than the previous quarter. That was from the FHFA. The five states seeing the highest, highest amount of appreciation were unusual, those being Rhode Island, Connecticut, West Virginia, Vermont, and New Jersey. The Case-Shiller price index, its counterparty, which includes jumbo loans, rose 5.5% in December, an acceleration from 5% reported in November. Basically, a rising tide rose all boats. Regionally, the Midwest and the Northeast both experienced the greatest annual appreciation at 6.7%. The economic data drought finally began to dry up this morning with durable goods being the first remotely relevant report since last Thursday. Results were mixed for the bond market with most of the normal line items seemingly being good for bonds. The more obscure capital the more obscure core capital goods shipments was bad for bonds due to this implication for quarter one GDP. While that's not the GDP data coming out this week, it's still enough to reverse the microscopic gains seen in the first couple of minutes of trading. Of course, all of the above is much ado about nothing in the bigger picture as bonds must continue waiting for truly meaningful data. There was similar there was similarly uneventful volatility surrounding the seven-year treasury auction, but yields remained under the prevailing technical ceiling at 4.32. the end of the day, UMBS closed the day up two basis points at 100.20. So at 100.20, it puts us in this thicket of Fibonacci and daily puts us right in this thicket between this really tough Fibonacci line at 100.428 and the 100-day 
and the 200-day moving average at 100.186. We also got some interesting news. Sterling Point Advisors reports that Fannie Mae's repurchase demand soared from $1.1 billion in 2020 to a jaw-dropping $2.1 billion in 2022. Talk about a numbers game. And guess who's left holding the bag? Yep. It's loan originators facing hefty price tags for repurchasing these scratch and dent loans. It's like cleaning up after a wild party you didn't even attend. And then we also got a post from our sponsor at wellthatmakesense.com. This is a great segment from our reading notes from the book, The Fifth Agreement. So this is Attention All Dynamic Real Estate Mortgage Professionals. Have you ever wondered how shifting your mindset could be the key to unlocking parallel, unparall to unlocking unparalleled success in the industry? The Fifth Agreement offers you just that. So check it out at our sponsor at wellthatmakesense.com.